How could I possibly do fingerstyle lessons from the White Album without breaking down Blackbird? Perhaps the quintessential fingerstyle song in the entire Beatles back catalogue and one that every guitarist seems to gravitate towards. And what kind of a guitar YouTube channel would this be without a Blackbird song lesson? Hey, my name is Ryan Naylor. I am a guitar teacher and content creator based in the south of France and my mission here is to help you grow as a guitarist by digging a little deeper and bringing you some extra insight into the songs you love to learn. For Blackbird, we should be exploring Paul McCartney's unique finger picking technique and breaking down the theory behind these lean chord shapes that he uses throughout the song. As always here, I shall break down the song into its different sections and present two playthroughs with the beat at a slower and then full tempo. PDF and guitar pro tabs of my transcription will be available to members of my Patreon group. You can find out more about that and help support the channel with the link in the description or in the cards. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. So Blackbird finds us in standard tuning in the key of G major for the most part, and the tempo is gonna be 95 BPM. What will be hugely beneficial here is a good understanding of diatonic thirds and tenths. Diatonic means that we stay firmly within the scale and play only the notes of G major. So here's G major on string number three, with the natural notes with an F sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G at the octave. We can harmonize that scale by adding a third above each note as we ascend. A third is spanning three alphabet letters. So to the G note, we can add G, A, B, the B note. As we move up to the A, we can go A, B, C. B to D, C to E, watch out for the shape change, D to F sharp, E to G, F sharp A, and then G and B. For Blackbird, we're not using thirds, but tenths. The scale notes are lowered an octave with the harmony note staying where it is. So here's my G, string six at the third, and then the B. If we count up the scale to measure this interval, the distance, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a tenth. The tenth can also be named a compound third. And a compound means one octave plus. So a compound third is one octave plus the third. That is a tenth, a major tenth. So what these interval shapes will now look like, we'd have G and B, then A and C. I've got the bass notes now on string five. A, C, B, D, C and E. There's a gap there. Also a gap D and F sharp. No gap between E and G. There's no frets gap between F sharp and A. And then G and B, we have a frets gap between those two notes. So it's always good when working this sort of thing to number the notes of the scale. And then you can see how the shapes change. So one, two, three, four with the gap, five with the gap, six, no gap, seven no gap and eight or one has the gap now for blackbird mccartney adds an inner pedal note meaning a constant note throughout the chord changing and this is going to be the open g the string number three if we play those tenths again with the added open g note we get closer to the blackbird sound check this and descending I'd recommend you do that as a visualization exercise and get confident with that harmonized scale up and down as you learn the song. That is especially important actually as we come into the B section of the song because we move into F major. So for those interval shapes we had there, the same rules apply, but the scale is gonna be lowered a whole step from if we're starting up here with what was G major. 
we would start from here, F major. You know, the same rules apply. Gap on the one, no gap seven, no gap six, gap five, gap four. And by the gap meaning this fret gap between the two fingers. Also, as you do this, you should be conscious of the muting technique in the fretting hand. Now, the fingers here are muting the unwanted strings, so if I were to strum these chord shapes, you will only hear the notes found in the chord. Now, I like to use finger four on string two. You'll see me doing that, because the underside of finger four is muting string one. Obviously, finger four is fretting string two. We have the open G string. And then finger one, we're doing the job, the underside of finger one is doing the job of muting out string four. It frets string five. And then the tip of finger one can mute string six. Or I like to tend to have my finger two and three up here. Just as a bit of a backup there to make sure string six is muted. So when everything is good, You're only here in the chord shape and you're ready to get into the picking pattern. Zooming in on the picking hand to break this down, what we're going to be doing, the thumb will grab the bass notes on string six and five and four when required. And I'm going to be using the index finger, as Paul McCartney does, to brush upwards underneath, starting underneath string number two. We're going to brush to hit string two and three at the same time to get that G pedal note ringing out. A nice way to start then would be to get the thumb and the fingers moving along with the beat at the same time. You can, if you like, anchor down with a finger or two on the board or you can have your hand floating. I tend to prefer to anchor, but let's get that beat going and give that a go. The next idea then is to add a constant up down with the index finger in what I'm going to call the eighth note figure. So up, down, up, down, one and two and three and four and the thumb will continue to pluck with the beat. One, two, three, four. Next is to add in the 16th note figure, which forms the majority of the song. Up, down, up, bass, up, down. Up, down, up, bass, up, down. One and a two E and three and a four E and. Next, you want to be confident going between those two ideas, the eighth note figure and the sixteenth note figure. So that's the two patterns as I'll identify them in the song. The eighth note figure and the sixteenth note figure. Okay, so with the picking technique and the chord visualization established, let's take a look at the song. Just the thing to bear in mind before we launch in is that the time signatures here are a little bit flexible. Sometimes we're in three, sometimes we're in four, sometimes we're in two. We open the song with a measure of three beats as you begin climbing those first three notes of the scale with the harmonized tenths. 
with the eighth note figure, the up down in the picking hand. So it's one, two, three. The hand then slides up into the G note in the tenth fret A10 with the harmonized note on top. And then you're gonna pick the 16th note figure twice. As the verse starts at four seconds, you're gonna repeat that intro and there's some movement in the fretting hand as you grab notes on string one. So we're coming out of the G with the 16th figure. Then we go down to the C with the eighth note picking in the hand. Then we're gonna go C sharp finger two, G finger one, that's E at the third fret. Then we go into the D. Then we go D sharp and A into the E with a harmonized note representing an E minor chord. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E minor. Once time, one time with the 16th figure. Then you lower the bass note to an E flat, keeping the top note where it was. Then we go to the eighth notes, D, C sharp, C. Then we lower the note on string two. Then we lower both notes. Then we open string one and go second fret B. Like implied A7 secondary dominant. Then we go to the D string with the thumb. This is when we pluck the D string and we go to a C note. B at the first fret. That's sort of an implied D7 sus which then takes us back to the G. There is then at 23 seconds a fill where we go C, B bass, B and D, then like that A7 with the C sharp, the D7 let's call it, G, repeats verse 2 at 28 seconds. So instead of the fill at the end of the verse this time, we jump straight into the chorus at 47 seconds. And this is when we're in that F major. So we're now thinking in terms of F. It's when this visualization of the scale helps. So we have F, E, D, C, B flat. Okay, so in terms of the scale, it's 1, 7, 6, 5, 4. The descent is done in the eighth note figure, and then as we hit the B flat, we go into the 16th for one, and then back to the C for one in the 16th. One, two, three, four, sixteenths. Repeat that. Sixteenths. This time we go to the A7. And then the D7. to the break at 58.
break at 58 seconds is basically the verse again. We just doing the scale climb up. There's just a slight difference in the picking there, but don't worry too much about that. the chorus again at 117. Again we're doing that F major descent. Into the break at 128. Break at 128 it starts in the same way as the verse did. One, two, three, And there's just a slight variation on that G measure. We start 16th as normal, one and a two E and three and four E and. One and a two E and three and four E and. I just use the finger that on that beat four because it's kind of tricky to get your head around the, uh, the fingers and thumbs. Just try it and you see what I mean. And then we do the G measure again, 16th. Then we go into the, the eighth notes figures. And we slow it down, and in comes that blackbird. Pause. Then we slide on down. 141 this is. We walk up again, but we go to the C. Instead of going to the G. C, B, A7, straight to the D. And then we're at 147 for like another verse into the ending. It's the verse again. Starts in the same way. We're going in verse. Chromatic walk up. Minor E flat. D C sharp C C minor. B bass A seven. D seven G. And then at two o five, you're repeating that last bit again twice. So it's C. B, A7, D, G. Can you do that again? You are waiting this moment to arrive. And it ends on the G. Tabs for the song will be available for all members of my Patreon group where you can help support my work and get exclusive bonuses each month for less than a cup of coffee. 
Find out more about that with the link in the cards or in the description. Otherwise, you can help support my work and level up your playing with one of the products available in my online store. Over there, you'll be able to get yourself a free copy of Fretboard Mastery, my guide to learning the notes of the fretboard in just a few days. Thank you very much. Practice well, and I'll see you again soon.